The search continuing for a suspect this morning after five people were shot here in downtown Denver. We have new video of that shooting happening coming up. A pizza ad is pulled after some called it racist and offensive. What the local owner and magazine company that printed the ad have to say. Heading out for shopping this weekend, we're going to tell you what items you should buy on Black Friday and which ones you should avoid. And as we take a live look outside, we have a beautiful day on tap, <clears> so <throat> let's get right to meteorologist Chris Tomer with yeah. today's forecast. Nice Great day looking today. start. Yeah, nice day today. Golfing type of day, Ernie, if you are interested in that. I got a 1250 <laughs> tee time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of sun today in the forecast and warm. Yeah. Almost 60 by this afternoon. Here is that view outside on our Bacchus and Shanker camera. You can see that uh, sort of pink or red glow out there this morning. Here's my pinpoint forecast day planner. We'll crawl out of the 20s to almost 50 by lunch, almost 60 here by the evening rush hour. It'll be a dry day in the mountains, but that is what will change first. On Thanksgiving afternoon, a wall of snow will move into the mountains. That's for uh, storm number one. It's uh, the minor one. The second bigger storm is on Saturday. That one could affect the front range as well. I'll take a look at both here and snow accumulation in just a few minutes, but we're going to go over and check out uh, our time saver traffic this morning. Hank, what are you looking at over there? Now well, we got uh, Sky 2 up and over I-25 near Evan. Colorado and the drive not too bad right now. We are going to have a rush hour, but it should be an abbreviated rush hour since we're in that holiday week mode. Yesterday was going to be uh, busier than what we are expecting today. And of course, Wednesday going to be the lightest of the work days this week. All right, let's go ahead and take you up north on north of Platteville. We've got uh, Weld County Road 34. It's shut down just east of 85 because of that train. Now that's not impacting traffic on 85 uh, because the train tracks run parallel with 85 in that area. But if you need to find an alternate around that, probably heading south down to Weld County Road 34 is a good idea. Of course, we don't know how long the train is, so that could be blocked as well. Bringing you back here into the Denver area, we are accident free. Uh, things though filling in on I-76, I-25, seeing some smatterings of slowdown, and you're crowded across the Cherry Creek Reservoir. Guys? Right now, Denver police still looking for the man who shot five people in downtown Denver. Now, it happened just blocks away from Coors Field, and this was the uh, news alert that was pushed out to your phone this morning. Channel 2's Evan Krugel is live this morning with new video of that shooting happening, Evan. Yeah, police have since cleared that scene here at 21st and Larimer, but the investigation is still extremely active this morning. Police still searching for whoever shot five people down here in Lodo yesterday. People who were here when it happened say it was quite a scene with shot after shot ringing out. Take a listen. That is cell phone video from someone who was in their apartment watching this all happen. We're told this all happened just after four o'clock yesterday afternoon. When police got here to 21st and Lawrence, they found one person already dead. Four others had been shot. They were all taken to Denver Health. The good news, those four have non life threatening injuries this morning. Now, police did close off a huge stretch of Lodo, collecting evidence for much of the evening. They had that mobile crime lab out here until about 530 this morning. Witnesses who were here say people were using clothes as tourniquets to try and stop the bleeding and help those four people who were wounded. We did speak with a construction worker who was working down here when it happened. He was standing right on this corner. Here's how he describes it. What it happened, I guess it was pretty much up close and pretty personal, I guess. I seen the shot, boom, then he started firing some more. After that, I was already gone out the way, so I had to get up out of there. Now, police have not released any description of a potential suspect or suspects this morning. It's also unclear whether this is a random shooting or whether those five victims were targeted in any way. We are working to get those answers from Denver police. Obviously, still tons of questions out here as this investigation continues. We're live this morning in Lodo. Evan Krugel, Channel 2 News. Yeah, a lot of people living in that area, they want some answers. Well, right now, Aurora fire officials are telling us it could take months to figure out how a natural gas explosion happened one woman was killed in that explosion at the Heather Gardens Retirement Community. Carol Ross was her name. She was a longtime resident. Excel Energy says the leak was caused by a third party contractor. Comcast says it did have crews laying fiber in the area. The Public Utilities Commission has now asked that all underground projects there stop until safety is fully assessed. We spoke to an expert who is an investigator of these things. He isn't working this case, but he was able to give us some insight. We may never figure out what the actual ignition source was. It doesn't really matter. The cause of the explosion was the gas leak. That's the number one thing. Figure out where the gas leak was and what was the cause. Randy Harris says investigators will work to see if the gas lines were properly located before any of those contractors started digging and their work. 
if their equipment, in fact, was functioning. It's now 635. A Greeley pizza shop will stop running a Thanksgiving ad, which is seen as offensive by many in the community. Now take a look at your screen. Right Coast Pizza ran an ad featuring a pilgrim woman offering a slice of pizza to a Native American. The caption reads, sorry about the smallpox, who wants a slice of pepperoni? Historical accounts say that Native Americans were purposely given blankets infected with smallpox in an effort to diminish their numbers. Now, the owner of the business and the publishers of the magazine that developed the ad, they both apologized to the community groups at a meeting in Greeley. Send that apology to everybody that has been seen this insensitive and ignorant ad. Like they explain it to you on how you hurt them. Uh, their kids are saying it, and it's, I mean, it really takes you down. And Am I accepting their apology? Yes, because I know there's going to be positive change. Now that ad has been discontinued. To your health for years, peanut allergies have been a big concern for you parents out there. Now there's a new food allergen that could become the next big issue. The FDA considering requiring companies to list sesame as an ingredient on their labels. Right now, eight major food allergens must be declared. Let's go through the list. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. Experts say they're seeing evidence that sesame allergies may be growing. More than half of people with the sesame allergy have to carry an EpiPen. The countdown to the biggest shopping day of the year is on, but Black Friday is no longer a one-day affair. Retail experts say it's now evolving into a week-long shopping event. Now, according to a recent survey by Retail Me Not, shoppers plan to spend $60 more on gifts this weekend compared to last year. So what should you be buying during Black Friday sales? Appliances and electronics like computers, phones and TVs are usually heavily discounted, some up to 40% off. Winter gear and sneakers are also on sale. Experts say now may be the best time to also score some major discounts on designer handbags, too. All right, I'll get right on that one. Well, if you're braving the long lines this weekend, here's what experts say are the worst mm -hmm. items to buy. Avoid furniture and wait until January. That's when they're at their lowest prices. Also, I know the latest gaming consoles. The same goes for all the toys on your list. Retail Me Not suggest that you wait two weeks before Christmas to make out that list for Santa Claus. Oh, that just adds so a lot stress. of people don't want to wait no. <laughs> that I'll long. I'll keep the extra six bucks. I'll do it now. Aurora Dispatchers recently got a call about a dog on a loose, and what they did next was above and beyond the call of duty. Callers from Panera Bread reported that 150-pound Great Dane right there standing outside their, their door. Well, Joey was working her normal overnight shift, but there weren't any officers available to respond. So Joey used her break to go and get the dog. When I pulled into the parking lot, she came barreling towards my car. Uh, she was not hard to get in the car at all. She was trying to get in while I was trying to get out. <laughs> now, Joey brought that dog back to the dispatch center where the dog was an instant hit after posing for pictures that they posted on social media. They were able to, to reunite Katniss. They named that huge dog Katniss. But now everybody's back together. All she wanted was a Panera sandwich. That's all she wanted. New at 630, nine people were injured after a hot air balloon stuffed with fireworks exploded. You heard me right. It happened at a festival in Myanmar. The fireworks were supposed to go off slowly as the balloon rose, but then they started shooting off in every direction and into the crowd. The balloon has 40 pounds of fireworks in it. All right, you want me to go up in a hot air balloon packed with fireworks? This is not the first time it's happened. Unfortunately, last year, two people were killed doing the same stunt. So that was El or Elon Musk, rather, has reached another milestone with his boring company. This is the very first video of the completed section of the company's underground tunnel. The ultimate plan is to deliver passengers, you know, like your bank deposit, through private high-speed tubes in order to reduce traffic congestion in Southern California. Musk hopes to open the test tunnel for a public viewing party on December 10th. I hope it works. It's going to be a great invention. Yeah, I don't know. We're, we're talking about one here in Colorado, get you to the mountains in like eight minutes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll believe it when I'm there. A delicious Thanksgiving meal shared with friends and family does more than just tantalize your taste buds. It's also good for your brain. Yeah, many brain processes are involved in planning, shopping for, and preparing that meal. These tasks test our ability to organize, prioritize, and remain focused. And a home-cooked meal shared with friends and family encourages, of course, social interaction. So please put the phone down. People who are socially isolated 
are more likely to be depressed, more likely to have suicide, more likely to have cognitive decline. Uh, but people who are socially engaged are more likely to have a social network and more likely to be happier in general. And it's been shown very clearly that they have better cognitive outcomes. So social stimulation is part of the meal. Doctors add that the Thanksgiving dinner menu can contribute to brain health as well. He recommends adding Mediterranean style items like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts, as well as butter. It can also be replaced with olive or canola oil. All of it sounds delicious. Well, we've got a post right now on KWGN's Facebook page. So what was the most embarrassing thing that happened to you at Thanksgiving? We want to hear your funny stories, even if it involved that other person who said, please don't ever tell us. <laughs> please go ahead and tag them and tag us on our Facebook page. Just search KWGN Channel 2. That should be very interesting. Well, here's just another example of why to lock your car if you live in the mountains. Listen to this. Bear, like, I don't know if you can see this, but I ha there is a bear in my side my car right now. He's literally in the seat. I just don't even understand. Oh my God. <laughs> it sounds like that when they were leaving Brittany alone. You can't blame the bears. They're, they're hungry. They're looking for some food before they go into hibernation. The bears made off with 50 chocolate bars. Lily was selling for her school fundraiser for prom. Luckily for the bears, or rather the girl, mm -hmm. the bears didn't damage much of the interior of that car. But they did get away with all those candy bars. All right, quickly, a time saver traffic, a time saver traffic alert. Sky 2 is on the way to Platteville, where there is a car train accident. It's currently blocking Weld County Road 34, just east of 85. Chris. All right, Hank. So if we were to look at Thanksgiving right here in our Pinpoint Feature Cast, this is Thanksgiving afternoon, and look what we have in the mountains. We have a wall of snow. Now, this is storm number one. The second one for Saturday is much larger than this. So talk more about both and take a look at uh, potential snowfall accumulation here in just a few minutes. And we know this morning the fate of Chris Watts, the man who admitted to killing his wife, two daughters, and his unborn son. We're telling you everything you need to know as you head out the door this morning. And one of Colorado's most famous mountaintops could be getting a name change. Why the person behind the petition says Mount Evans is offensive. You're watching Daybreak on Colorado Zone Channel 2. From Channel 2 News Daybreak, this is a time saver traffic alert. And at 646, we've got Sky 2 heading up to Platteville where there's a car train accident. You can see the flashing lights off in the distance. Sky 2 will be over that in the next few minutes and we'll bring you uh, closer pictures when they are. But this is going to have the uh, th Highway 34, Weld County Road 34, just east of 85, shut down. Uh, so as far as your alternate route, you probably need to take Front Road south down to Weld County Road 30 to get around this. But again, uh, Sky 2 about five minutes away from being right on top of it. And when they are, we will bring you those images. Okay, at 646, and welcome back to Channel 2 News. We want to get to today's top stories as you get ready to head out the door around 7 o'clock. A murderer sentenced, a shooting inside a hospital, in an effort to change the name of a popular 14 here in Colorado. I trusted you to take care of them, not kill them. And they also trusted you, the heartless monster, and then you take them out like trash. You disgust me. It started as a missing person investigation three months ago. Now it ends with a husband and father spending the rest of his life in prison. Christopher Watts got that sentence after pleading guilty to killing his pregnant wife and their two daughters. He also got another 36 years for tampering with their bodies and another 48 years for wrongful termination of his unborn son, who is going to be named Nico. Three people are dead, including a police officer after a shooting inside a Chicago hospital. Police say a doctor and pharmaceutical assistant were killed as well. One of those victims had been in a previous relationship with the shooter. That shooter died at the scene. Officials say the officer ran toward the shots, likely saving countless lives. And there's a push to change the name of Mount Evans. A Denver elementary school teacher has formally submitted a petition to rename the 14er to Mount Cheyenne Arapahoe. It is named now after Colorado Governor John Evans. The petition claims he played a controversial role in the Sand Creek Massacre. 230 Native Americans were killed by soldiers, most of the victims, women, children, and tribal elders. The new proposed name, as I said, Mount Cheyenne Arapaho. According to the U.S. Board of Geographic Names that changes names and names things, a change can only be made for a, quote, compelling reason. 
Keep up with the latest breaking news and top stories today. Be sure to download our app, KWGN, for free for your phone or your tablet. 648 now as parts of California look to pick up the pieces after those major wildfires. Rain is expected to fall later this week. And you would think that that would be a good thing, but it may actually complicate the efforts of crews searching for human remains. Hundreds of search crews from the National Guard to the coroner's investigators, investigators, firefighters, and even anthropologists are rushing to find the remains. The mud or the ash, now wet ash, could slow down our process. There's trees in the area, as you know, that have been badly burned. Uh, they're unstable to begin with. And uh, if they become water soaked and heavier, uh, there's the, the potential for them to be blown down. Well, the scorched hillsides are also susceptible to failure, causing ash and debris flows and potential mudslides. A flash flood watch is in place. And Chris Tomer, this is the system that is actually heading our way. It is, Ken, yeah. And in fact, uh, there's two pieces to this, two different storm systems for us. Uh, one is going to be on Thanksgiving. The other one will be on Saturday. Outside right now, though, we've got a clear morning. That's a live camera over Denver looking back to the west. We'll get into the forecast aspect of this now. So my pinpoint forecast today, we're headed up to 56. So basically 60 degrees here today with lots of sunshine. It'll be dry in the mountains today as well, but that's going to change. Here's our pinpoint future cast. So we'll start it off this afternoon. Sunshine and dry. Let's jog ahead. Now we're Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning right here. You can see the white spreading in. That's cloud cover. And there's your snow by the afternoon, evening hours across I-70, mainly west slope. And then that kind of lingers into Friday morning. This is Friday at 7. That one misses the Denver Metro. The second one on Saturday may give us some snow. How much accumulation? Well, let me just detail both. Watch the clock. This is by Friday morning. We're looking at a general 1 to 6 inches. Mainly up high on the Continental Divide, Winter Park, Loveland A Basin, back to Vail, up towards Steamboat. Then we add to that on Saturday. So totals here, grand totals by Sunday morning at 7. Some big numbers up here. Look at Loveland at 17, A Basin 15, Steamboat 15, Buff Pass almost 2 feet. Long's Peak, a foot of snow. And again, that is by Sunday morning. Pinpoint seven day forecast. We are warm and dry all the way through Friday at about 60. We may get an inch of snow here across the Front Range on Saturday, but most of that stays in the mountains. And then on Sunday, we turn sunny and drier as the day wears on. All right, Hank, you've, oh, there it is. You've got it up. You've yeah, time the, saver uh, traffic alert. Boy, uh, trouble's up in Platteville. Sky 2 just now getting on the scene. This is going to be a train versus car accident. There you see the train on the right of the screen. Uh, it looks like that train's about uh, a mile long. And specifically, the crash occurred in the intersection of US 34 at that train. Now, this is going to be uh, actually make that Weld County Road 34 just east of 85. 85 is okay. But Weld County Road 34 is blocked, and it looks like Weld County Road 36 is blocked as well as your alternate. Think about using uh, Weld County Road 32. Uh, but a developing story happening in just nor on the north side of Platteville this morning. When we get more details, we are going to continue monitoring this. Uh, we will bring those with you as soon as they make their way into our newsroom. A uh, quick look at the map. That's where it's located on the north end of Platteville, right there near the curve there of US 85. And a uh, quick look here at the Denver area. Wrapping up in the metro, you can see that we do have some heavy traffic not as bad as a normal day this is not a normal day this is holiday mode that we're in though a lot of people are heading to the office guys and how come we're working <laughs> right, that's what i want to know the well, news all goes of on. you who live in the south metro area and you shop at uh, park meadows mall you know it's a jam sometimes there's an early christmas though for you christmas gift a big road improvement project is finally, finally finished. Lone Tree, Douglas County, the city of Centennial, they all funded this project to cut down on traffic and to keep, keep people coming to the mall. <laughs> if I can spit it out, Emily <laughs> Allen joins us live with what to expect as many shoppers are planning their list, Emily, and Park Meadows is one of the big spots. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a huge economic driver for our state, which is one of the reasons why they ended up trying to get all of this done. This is what this looks like right now. I want to walk you guys to this intersection before the general manager of the mall says this is what they would call the Hail Mary turn. You can see this car that's right over there. That's because people would be turning in here trying to get past traffic, just never a safe situation. That's why they ended up putting up this big stoplight. This is one of the many things that they have done as part of this project, all about increasing safety, 
cutting down on traffic. If you're headed out to par Park Meadows for Black Friday, here are some of the things you're going to find that are different than what you're going to be used to. There are more lanes when you exit off I-25 at County Line Road, and as you're leaving the mall, there are more lanes on the northeast side of the mall to improve access to I-25. This doesn't just help shoppers, that also helps commuters in the Lone Tree area. This project was about 20 years in the making, and the general manager tells me that initially the mall had wanted to install this kind of infrastructure, but ended up scaling it back back in 1996. Well, since then, as you can imagine, both the mall and this entire area have grown substantially, and the mayor of Lone Tree said it got to the point where this was very critical. We hit that sweet spot in time where I think everyone recognized that in order for us to continue to be as successful as we had, uh, we needed to get this work done and really thrilled and our goal was always to get it done prior to the holidays. The mall, Lone Tree, everyone down here is really pleased to see that all of this wrapped up, of course, ahead of Black Friday, even wrapping up at the beginning of November just to make sure that as that holiday shopping ramps up, they're ready for all those commuters and drivers. Emily Allen, Channel 2 News. All right, Emily, we hope that it alleviates some of the issues on the south side. Thank you. 654, back to breaking news. The Sky 2 is now out over this uh, car versus train crash. It's north of the city along Highway 85 at County Road 34. 34 is blocked. Highway 85 is not. Uh, so you cannot get across 34. But as the chopper pulls out, you can see the road at the bottom of your screen. That's 85. So we will continue to bring the very latest information as Hank is over on the phones trying to figure yeah. out exactly what happened. And that car down there on the left, that's uh, on its side right now. We don't know the uh, extent of injuries to the driver. All right, Chris Prete joins us now uh, with... Uh, a lot of breaking news this I'm morning. I'm telling you, it's yeah. busy. All right, well, how about this? Fox is trying something new. They're going to mix the movie Deadpool yeah. mm -hmm. and make it a little more family-friendly so that maybe your teenagers could watch, your kids. Yeah, they will watch order. anyway. Why am I here? You're in a PG-13 version of Deadpool. Filtered? That's right. The first trailer for Once Upon a Deadpool <laughs> features Fred Savage more than 30 years post-Princess Bride, and there is some very Deadpool snark aimed at the superhero's own studio, Fox. I kind of prefer Marvel movies. We are Marvel. Yeah, but you're, you know, Marvel licensed by Fox. It's like if the Beatles were produced by Nickelback. It's music, <laughs> but it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the Tamer footage for family audiences can be seen in theaters December 12th through Christmas Eve. <laughs> Nothing says Christmas Eve like, like Deadpool. Deadpool. Oh, the kids will be so excited because mine have asked when do they get to see it. And I said, when you're not living in this house. <laughs> uh, but now look, we can go. There you I'm go. Merry you. Christmas to one and all. All right, thanks. All right, let's go back to that traffic alert now with uh, Hank Carey. Yeah, so uh, watching this uh, story north of Platteville, we've got US or Weld County Road 34 just east of Highway 85 shut down because this train is stopped because this car somehow got in its path. It's on its side right now. No details on the extent of the injuries involved in that area. A quick look in the Denver area. You can see some heavy traffic north of I-70 and a stall on 225 southbound of Yosemite is blocking the lane of traffic. That's why things are crowded back to about I-Left. 6.56 on a Tuesday morning. We'll take a break and be right back.